In the closing years of the Cataclysm, Tevat was consumed by perpetual conflict. The fires of war raged on, spreading deep into the regions that all began from Conry. Master alchemist, known as Gol, unleashed an army of shadowy creatures and attempted to destroy everything in its path. The seven gods that fought in this period tried their best in protecting their lands. Unfortunately, some of them fell to their death. A year before the Cataclysm, estimately 500 years prior to the events of Genshin Impact, Makoto and A have since established peace across Inazuma. Their nation was thriving, and Makoto strived to preserve elegance and transience. The majority of the old administration was replaced with new faces, as they had close allies known as Kitsune Saigu and Mikoshi Chiyo. They often gathered and had picnics together as a way to escape their tedious work. When the cataclysm began, one by one, they were lost to the darkness of the abyss, leaving A with sadness and regret. Despite this, one of her last friends close to her, the elegant and beautiful Yai Miko, tries to reach her but is ignored. However, following the death of her friends and her most beloved sister, she goes into seclusion, meditating in her plane of euthymia, trying to preserve her notion of eternity. In our previous video, we covered the battle between Orobashi and A at Yashiori Island, an encounter that forever changed the geopolitics of Inazuma. Now, the remnants of the past will again bring back the tides of war between the two islands. The second civil war of Inazuma that we know of is a fascinating subject that didn't get shown enough that it deserves. The face-off between the East and West would be a divine test for the nation, and this war would shed the blood of innocent civilians who were just living their daily lives. However, we can only find most of the details in weapon descriptions, books, NPC dialogues, voice lines, and bulletin boards. I think it's an interesting topic, so in this video, I wanted to share the details of this war that caused Inazuma in such a chaotic and depressing state. Again, it is important to note that some details or actions I might mention here are only speculation. This is to fill in the missing details from what we vaguely know about this war. Now then, let us begin. After the Cataclysm most of those who were close to A were now gone, especially the death of her sister, which she considered her greatest loss. She felt alone and afraid, and had little to reach out to. When she returned back to Inazuma, she now had the possession of the Gnosis and took her sister's place. However, she finally decides to cut ties with Celestia and voluntarily gives up the Gnosis, which now became the possession of Yai Miko. Yai tries to comfort her, but is ignored and left without a word. Shortly, A pursues the eternity of her nation and avoids the path that Conria took. As a first step, she had to reach eternity for herself, so she builds a puppet with a technology lost to time. She first made a prototype known as Kunikuzushi, or who we call today as the Balladeer, but this puppet was thrown away. Her second attempt was much more successful, which became the final puppet we see today as the Raiden Shogun. While A was in an eternal meditating state, it was the Raiden Shogun who worked to ensure that Inazuma would follow the principles of eternity. However, her reign was not peaceful, and there have been numerous events of resistance, the increase of piracy and banditry across the land, and the accumulation of filth and curses that was left unchecked. Years passed, and it was slowly becoming obvious that the nation's welfare was now worsening, and the Chirai Commission that ruled the government was becoming corrupt and abusive with their power. The situation became worse when the Fatui arrived and began plotting against the Raiden Shogun, starting a war to boost their hold on the nation. After some careful planning, the Raiden Shogun suddenly institutes the Sokoko Decree, shutting Inazuma's borders and the Vision Hunt Decree, 
in order to seize all visions within its lands. The Sakoko Decree was to be enforced by the Kanjo Commission, while the Vision Hunt was enforced by the Tenryo Commission. This would soon spark the war that will haunt and torment the inhabitants of the nation. Before we continue, I'd like to add some trivia about the inspiration of these two decrees issued by the Shogunate. Let's start with the Vision Hunt Decree, which is a reference to the Katanagari or Sword Hunt, which was called several times in Japanese history. Explaining how this Katanagari works, it begins when a new ruler, who took their position by force, issues a confiscation of weapons from his enemies. This is to ensure that no one could take the new ruler's position by force just as he had done. There were many sources proving that these sword hunts were really issued, and the one most famous was in 1588, ordered by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a feudal lord of the late Sengoku period, regarded as the second great unifier of Japan. His sword hunt was intended to prevent peasant uprisings and to deny weapons to his adversaries. Today, this concept of katanagari is still present in Japan, as they prohibited swords that are produced by mass production. Now as for the Sakoku Decree, the term Sakoku means country in chains, and was a policy during the Edo period, when relations and trade between Japan and other countries were severely limited, and nearly all foreign nationals were barred from entering Japan, while common Japanese people were kept from leaving the country. However, Japan was not completely isolated under the Sakoku policy. Instead, Sakoku was a system in which strict regulations were placed on commerce and foreign relations by the shogunate and certain feudal domains, and had only four places where people were permitted to enter and make a trade. In-game, Inazuma has only one gateway, and it's the port of Rito, where outlanders are being mistreated and forced to pay unfair amounts of mora. During the vision hunt, as the soldiers received their orders, they began searching every nook and cranny for anyone who had a vision. The Tenryo Commission stripped noble families, all political rivals and opponents of their status and land, and sold it off. Vision holders were either forced into exile, or were imprisoned and mistreated by the Tenryo guards, while some of them eventually challenged the Shogun, but would ultimately fail. Unable to see the suppression continue, Watatsumi Island finally had enough and rebels under the leadership of Sangonomi Okokomi, who was recently named as their divine priestess. Goro is then appointed as one of her generals in the resistance army. It is probable that another reason for this rebellion could be their hatred that they harbored for the shogun over the years. As the vision holders fled from their homes, most of them heard of this resistance brewing in the east. Only by uniting can they win back their freedom, and so they enlisted for the resistance army, and took arms against the shogunate. This includes our wandering samurai, Kazuha, who made friends with Goro. Most of them assembled at Yashiori Island, but nowhere near Fort Fujito, which was controlled by the shogunate army. Upon hearing this rebellion against the shogunate, the Tenryo Commission appoints General Kujo Masahito as the leader of their army and sets up a mandatory draft to increase their numbers. This draft required all families to have a son be trained and equipped for the war. They were also supplied with weapons made from jade steel by the Mikage Furnace. This highlights their superiority in numbers and high-quality weapons against the much lesser and weaker rebel forces. As for the rebels, they lacked weaponry and experience in a fight and most of them were just locals who were using sharp tools from their line of work, before they became fugitives. They needed to arm themselves to stand a chance against the much superior shogunate troops. So they planned to take the only place where Inazuma's famed jade steel was produced altogether. This jade steel was a material unique to Inazuma-made swords, and came from Mikage Furnace. This furnace used the power of Tatarigami energy sourced from Orobashi's body at Yashori Island, and was built with the help of some experts from Fontaine a few years ago. This is the reason why Inazuman weapons are one of the best, 
if not the best in Tevat. However, in order to take such a position, they first needed a base where the rebels could stay and get closer to the front lines. Kokomi set up a battle plan to take Fort Fujito, where the shogunate soldiers are stationed at Yashori Island. This plan involves Goro, bringing his best men with him and setting out to the island. These men were some of Watatsumi's trained warriors who were taught with Tozano's famed sword styles, Gatsumun and Yushio. They landed during the night and approached the fort carefully wanting not to alarm the guards. Some of his men climbed the fortifications and opened the gates in which the rest followed with an assault. Most of the shogunate troops were surprised, and some of them had no time to arm themselves to fight back. The following morning, the shogunate soldiers were beaten and retreated back to Kanazuka and reported the situation. With the help of more rebels stationed in the island, the resistance has pushed them out of Yashori and occupies Fort Fujito, making it their base of operations. The villagers on the island had mixed feelings about this news. Some of them welcomed the resistance, while the others were scared for their lives. However, the resistance meant no harm to these villagers, but instead asked them for food and supplies for their army. As a result, food became scarce, and most of the villagers now had to buy overpriced supplies from pirates. On the shogunate side, the remaining survivors from the Fort Fujito assault brought the news to Kujo Masahito and planned his next move. He knew that the rebels would try to take the Mikage Furnace, and a battle would follow. He also knew that they lacked weapons and supplies, and had little chance of winning against a much trained and well-equipped army. So he marched forth from his encampment and tried to take them at Yashuri Island, with the intent to crush the rebellion and end the war early. When Masahito and his army arrived at Yashuri, they experienced heavy rains and storms on the island. This weather slowed their march to Fort Fujito and was forced to encamp numerous times. Suddenly, some of their troops began to show some symptoms from an unknown disease. They were having nightmares each night, which caused them to scream and howl that scared the rest of the army. They also had high fever and soon lacked the medicine to treat them. Still, Masahito persisted to continue their march but was stopped when half of his army were now either sick or dead. The shogunate army was forced to retreat, even though they were met with no resistance. Before their arrival, some Orobashi loyalists infiltrated the resistance and broke the wards that sealed the Tatarigami. This was the reason why the island suddenly experienced persistent rains and storms. As Masahito and his troops retreated, Kokomi saw this as an opportunity and made plans to assault the furnace. She immediately sent all her troops to try and assault the area. At first, the rebels surrounded the place and soon fired arrows from all directions, scattering the shogunate troops defending the area. To survive this attack, the shogunate army formed a defensive square and made a last stand against the rebels. While Kokomi tried to take the Mikage furnace carefully, some rebels intentionally damaged the place, who kept this plan a secret from Kokomi so as to push the shogun's army away. This shows the disorderly ranks of the resistance, which will soon affect their chances of victory. Before this attack, the inhabitants of Tatarasuna and the workers at Mikage Furnace were evacuated to prevent further innocent deaths. Now that the rebels took control of the furnace, they attempted to supply themselves with the weapons that the shogunate troops had. However, they continued on to reach Narukami Island, and so the rebels' next plan was to take the fortified Kuju encampment. That was the last major position that stood in their way of reaching Inazuma City. Thinking that if they controlled the whole Kanazuka region, this would certainly cement their chances of winning against the shogun. Nevertheless, this was all easier said than done. The next day, Kokomi and Goro first wanted to assess the landscape and scout the area for possible attack points. They were surprised that the shogunate troops installed the Kamuijima cannons in Kanazuka with the express intent to wipe them out. 
These cannons had superior firepower that could kill a dozen men in an instant. Kokomi carefully assessed these cannons, guessing that they might have some flaws that they could use to their advantage. She was right, as these cannons had limited range and was very hard to move when adjusting their position. To counter these, Kokomi and her army used guerrilla tactics and avoided coming in range from the cannons. The rebels began to assault the encampment and were also reinforced with ships and new troops from more enlisted volunteers. Kokomi and her army split into small groups and ambushed any shogunate soldiers who were supplying the encampment. The resistance tried to cut off the shogun's supply lines and also used hit-and-run tactics to ambush their caches of supplies in an attempt to starve the guards out. The shogunate tries their best to utilize the cannons, but to no avail, as the rebels had already retreated once they adjusted its positions. The resistance avoided direct conflict and managed to irritate the shogun's forces. Small skirmishes from all sides harassed the defenders, and each time, they dealt significant damage to the shogunate's troops because of how they exploited outstanding mobility with the guerrilla warfare. The shogunate troops were now losing morale, as the rebels would win each encounter. Meanwhile, at Inazuma City, the defeat at Yashori and the assault at Kanazuka soon reached the Kujo clan. So Kujo Sara is then appointed as the new general, following the disastrous defeat of Masahito. To make it worse, Masahito was also shamed and demoted. The resistance managed to take a strong position and were now in control of the tides of war. Unfortunately for them, this would all be short-lived, as the shogunate would regroup and strike back. With most of the shogun's army demoralized with their defeats, Kujo Sara first wanted to instill discipline among her troops and began ordering extra routines to be carried out. She made them fear her, much more than how they feared their enemies. When the time came that they were resupplied and regrouped, Kujo Sara set out to Kanazuka. Upon her arrival, she rallied the guards at Mikage Furnace and set up new battle plans to counter their resistance. Knowing full well that they used guerrilla tactics, she made sure that they would be cautious in their next encounter. With their superiority in numbers and quality in weaponry, the resistance would have no chance against them in open battle. After some careful planning and executing, the shogunate army managed to force the rebels into an open conflict and disable their use of guerrilla warfare. They set up traps and made sure that they would be one step ahead of the rebels. The fighting was bitter, with the shogun force now taking the offensive. One by one, the resistance were losing each encounter and were pushed back to Yashiori Island. Kokomi and the rebels had failed to take the encampment as she had originally hoped. By the end of the day, the shogunate troops held and fortified the area. This was Kokomi's first defeat in her campaign. She had underestimated Kujusara, overused the same tactics, and paid the consequences. For the other side, this victory increased the morale of the shogun's army, and they were looking forward to defeating the rebels. However, time and time again, Kokomi would set up new battle plans and countered every move that the shogunate could think of. Their forces would often meet at Nozuchi Beach, where the place itself has since become a wasteland full of wrecked ships, wasted swords, and torn flags. This became the no man's land for the two factions, and it's hard to say who has the upper hand. With the war having no end anytime soon, the refugees who evacuated from Yashiori and Kanazuka arrived at Narukami. With little food and cramped up space in the city, the Kanjo Commission issued that these refugees be placed into conscription and those that refuse are to be arrested. Within Inazuma City, the official military dojo closes, and the civil war and the Sokoku decree led to food shortages. Some of the shogunate guards leave their posts to become bandits and pirates that terrorized other parts of the nation. As the famine ravages Narukami Island, the Yashiro Commission and the Grand Narukami Shrine begins providing food aid to the people. 
but is still not enough to feed the whole nation. The princess of the Kamisato clan, Ayaka, and her helper, Toma, establish a secret movement in an attempt to resist the Vision Hunt decree. Adding also Yoimiya and his father, who helps in hiding the maker of counterfeit visions, Masakatsu, and other vision holders as well. However, they had no alignment with the resistance, and so they acted upon their own. Throughout the year, a series of battles continued on, but it ultimately led to a stalemate between the two factions, where one side was unable to defeat the other. Because of the war, the high saturation of Tatarigami energy caused the deactivation of the Mikage furnace and the failure of its auto-restart program. So it was forced to halt production and was placed in a protective dome. This then set the stage for the traveler's arrival in the Act 2 of the Arkan Quest. It is possible that there have been some more battles before we arrived, but were only minor encounters. After the retreat of the resistance from Kanazuka and the failed attempt to take the Mikage furnace and the Kujo encampment, they head back to Fort Fujito, worried that they haven't got enough remaining weapons for the war. An unknown organization suddenly begins to offer them weapons and supplies. Because of the desperation that the rebels now faced, Kokomi and their resistance unknowingly accepted these offerings. This was the start of Kokomi's recklessness, as she had little info about this organization or why they were offered with such supplies. It can be concluded that the manipulation of the Fatui and the effects of the Vision Hunt decree was the main cause of this war. While this war caused the suffering of the nation, it is later stated that A knew of the Fatui's plans but made no actions against them. As for the reason why this is, it is clearly up for debate. But as for my perspective, A allowed the Vision Hunt decree because it was not threatening her eternity. However, her lines justifying this decree that was meant to protect her people, indicate how detached she had become from reality. So even though she knew of the Fatui's plans, she couldn't find it in herself to take care for the temporary suffering of temporary lives. I want to take a neutral stance here, because while her story has been tragic, I didn't seem to feel close to her as much as I did with Zhongli and Benti. But all in all, I do feel pity for her, but most especially the nation she presides over. Now this ends my video about the civil war of Inazuma. I know it's already a popular opinion that most of us didn't like the story arc of Inazuma. While the build-up and the main concept was great, what lacked was the execution and the pacing of the story. Adding also the lack of character build-up for the playable characters, such as Kokomi, Kujosara, Ayaka, and most especially A. Still, I have high hopes for the story of Sumeru and I hope that its execution will be better. Now, if you have some thoughts about the video, as well as suggestions for future ideas, leave a comment and let us know. Thank you very much for watching, and if you've hung around till the end and think it deserves one, give this video a like and hit that notification button for more videos. Once again, my name is Clementine, and as usual, until the next one, be safe and stay tuned.